good climber, so I'll just let you handle the statue. I'll go check the facilities up ahead. By the way, once we're done with our work here, would you like to chat some more? Devata or Lesser Lord Kusanali? The name does seem to fit the statue somehow. Hmm. Well, anyway, we'll have to figure that out later. Let's get started on cleaning the statue. Paimon will fly up and take care of the top and you clean everything below. That's one clean statue. Let's head down and meet up with Kale. After all that climbing, let's take a little break. I brought some fruit and water for us. Yay, food! What kind of goodies did you bring? Hey, don't be a party pooper. It's not like Kale is a stranger or anything. Besides, the best way to compliment a chef is to show passion for their food. Xiang Ling taught Paimon that. I prepared a nice portable dish that forest rangers like to eat called Pita Pockets. I hope you'll like them. Uh, wh whoops! Ah, no! You dropped it on the ground! Not to worry. I wrapped a few layers of oiled paper around each pita. They should be fine. Oh, whew. Paima nearly had a heart attack there. Thank goodness you wrapped them in paper. Paimon wouldn't have been able to sleep at night knowing something so tasty had been wasted. <laughs> you really know how to compliment the chef, Paimon. Since you liked it so much, I'll be sure to give you a copy of the recipe sometime. I'll even include all my personal cooking pointers, so you'll be making your own pita pockets in no time. Yay! Thanks, Kale! It's hard to believe someone as diligent as you could have clumsy moments, too. Oh, <laughs> uh, I guess it happens from time to time. So, uh, Kale, don't you think that Tainari's a little too strict with you? He won't let you touch anything without his permission. Paima knocks stuff over all the time flying around the Traveler, but she's never said anything. Everyone has their clumsy moments. No, no, you've got the wrong idea about Master. Uh, <laughs> sure, he may seem a bit harsh at first, but with some time, you'll see that he's actually very kind-hearted. I've heard the veteran rangers say that Master is from some ancient and mysterious race that is known for their cunning wit and reclusive nature. Oh, by the way, you've heard of the... ...called, uh... Um, um, uh, uh, um, boo, something? <laughs> well, anyway, because Master does a lot of research on plants, sages from the academia have written him many times, inviting him to take up an official position there. But Master declines their offers every time, saying, Sumeru City is too noisy. It'd be bad for my ears.
<laughs> Seems you already know him well. Anyway, I'm sure the sages were not happy about his responses. Master could obviously have a bright future in the academia, but he insists on sticking to the path of a forest watcher. Every day he helps the locals of the forest and passes on his extensive knowledge to trainees like me. In fact, Master's the one who taught me how to make pita pockets. Really? Paima would have never guessed that. Oh, speaking of Tainari, he was the one who took care of you after finding you passed out yesterday. He even carried you all the way here. Paimon's still kinda upset, though. He kept scolding Paimon the entire way here. Oh no, I'm sorry. Master might have been overreacting a little. But, uh, it's mostly because Paimon wouldn't stop yelling. Why, oh why? Is she going to die? It probably started to get under Master's skin after a while. Hey! Don't laugh! Paimon was genuinely concerned about you! <laughs> hey! Now even Kali's starting to laugh! Ugh, that's it! Paimon won't forget this! It's time for some Paimonial wrath! No! Don't touch me! Oh, sorry, Kale. Paimon didn't mean to scare you. Uh, no, I, I just... I... I didn't mean that. Kale, are you okay? What's the matter? Noah, I'm... <laughs> I'm fine. I'm sorry. I must have startled you both reacting like that. Oh, well, it's getting late now. Uh, let's hurry back to Gundarverville. I think Master and the others should be back by now, too. Huh? What was up with Kai just now? And why is she in such a hurry all of a sudden? Look, she's practically running back. Paimon can't even see her now. You've returned. Yep, we're back! Uh, have you seen Kale by any chance? Oh, Kale? Yes, I saw her go into her room just a moment ago. Oh, okay. Guess we'll just have to wait and talk to her tomorrow then. Ah, it's you two. I was just about to go. What are you doing here? Where's Kale? 
I came to check on Kale's condition. To put it simply, she's not well. You mean she's sick? How could she be... Oh, wait a minute. Could it be because of what Paimon did yesterday? No, no need to worry. <laughs> something as small as you could never harm her. Uh, this sickness is something that Kale has been dealing with for some time. Kale has been more excited than usual since you two arrived. A little too much so, to be honest. She hasn't remembered to take care of herself. <sighs> I suppose it's understandable, though. She hasn't been around anyone she considered a friend for some time now. It must have been refreshing for her to have you two here. So, Tainari, what's really wrong with Kale? Um, let's take this conversation elsewhere. Kale just fell asleep after taking her medicine. She needs some peace and quiet. All right, let's continue our conversation here, shall we? To be honest, I hadn't realized that you're that honorary knight from Mondstadt until Kale told me just now. I've also heard all about your deeds in Liyue and Inazuma. So, just to clarify, what I'm about to tell you about Kale is not because of who you are or your past feats. Instead, I am going to tell you because... Well, because Kale asked me to. And honestly speaking, I was against Kale revealing her past to you. But she insisted, saying you two treated her with sincerity and as a friend. So now she wishes to reciprocate the gesture. So Tainari, what exactly is wrong with Kale? You said this is something she's been dealing with for some time. Just how serious is it? Right. Ever since she was a child, She's been afflicted with a disease called Elazar. Elazar? Yes. It's a disease unique to the lands of Sumeru. It is characterized by dark and hardened scales that form on the body. At first, the afflicted may only feel mild numbness on the affected area of the skin. However, as the disease progresses, one may begin feeling fatigued and even experience peripheral paresthesia. In its final stages, the disease strips a person of the ability to control their own body, and they effectively become completely immobile. That sounds terrifying! Wait, hold on. So when Kale seemed to be acting a little clumsy earlier, it was because... Correct. That would be the effects of Elazar which is precisely why I do not want her carrying or holding anything, lest she ends up hurting herself. With appropriate treatment, the disease can be effectively controlled before it progresses to a more serious stage. However, there is unfortunately still no true cure for Elazar. Nevertheless, Kale's mother still hoped that there was something out there. She handed Kale over to an organization known as the Fatui after one of their members lied and said they had a cure. What? The Fatui? Ah, it appears you are already familiar with them. That'll save me some explanation. Anyway, the person who eventually rescued Kale and brought her to me for care said that she had been given to a harbinger known as the Doctor. I have no idea how this doctor managed to do it, but her case of Elazar was completely stable for all the years that Kale was with them. However, Kale's days with the Fatui were anything but pleasant. Kale is a resilient individual and always tries to appear cheerful, but her experience with the Fatui has left deep scars. Even now, she can still feel deathly afraid of someone touching her. Kale's been through so much suffering. Oh, by the way, Paimon. Kale wanted me to tell you that she's sorry for scaring you yesterday. She also wanted both of you to know that she's sorry for hiding her illness. She doesn't need to apologize. None of this is her fault at all. Well said. I hope you'll get a chance to tell her that in person the next time you see her. 
Kale once thought that it would be impossible for her to have any real friendships. I trust that you two will never let my trainee experience such emotional pain again. Don't worry, Tainari. We'll take good care of her. Well, it's not too serious at this point. She overexerted herself the last couple of days, which is what led to her breakdown this time. As long as she has taken her medicine and gets plenty of rest, she should get better. Though, I must admit that Kale's condition was much more stable when she first arrived here in Gundarvaville. She was interested in the work of the forest rangers the moment she saw us. I could see that she was serious about learning, so I felt compelled to ask her to join us. Her stamina has gotten much worse recently. Though a moderate amount of physical exercise is always necessary, I'm afraid the long-distance patrols are a little too much for her now. <sighs> All right. Now that I've told you about Kale's past, I think I'll head into the rainforest to find some ingredients needed for her medicine. I'll see you two later. Yeah, we'd like to do something to help Kale too. All right, but I must warn you two. The rainforest is a dangerous place, especially for someone who's still recovering like the Traveler. You must follow closely and listen to every instruction. No problemo! Let's go then. We'll be looking for a plant known as Lunar Lotus. It's often used to help those afflicted with Elazar recover their energy. Hey, Tainari? Where exactly are we going to find this plant? Lunar Lotus can be found all over the rainforest, but it often grows right here around Gundarvaville. Hmm. Given the name, it sounds like we should be looking for it in the water. You are correct. Lunar Lotus grows in the water. When fully matured, they look like giant blue flowers floating on the water surface. Quite an attractive species, if you ask me. The large petals are actually the plant's leaves and sepals, which surround a very small flower. You should note that many of the plants found in Sumeru have names that are contrary to their species. Take the Kalpalata, for example. The plant is not a lotus at all, but rather a vine. And then there's the Sumeru Rose, which is not a rose, completely contrary to its name. Oh! Huh. Um... Okay, then. No, Tapaimon. Never bring up the topic of flowers with Tainari. There should be lunar lotuses growing somewhere in this area. Let's split up and begin searching. If you could manage to gather four of them, that would be sufficient. We'll rendezvous here once you've gathered the needed amount. Let me take a look. Hmm. Good, very good. These are all excellent quality. I'm quite glad you two came along. Your exploration experience helped save me a lot of time here. It seems we even have enough time to stock up on some other things I need. Hey, Tainari! Ah, yes, that's Amir and the others. But didn't they just set off not too long ago? What are they doing back so early? Let's go find out what's going on.
Tainari, thank goodness we found you here. We were just about to head back and find you at Gandarvaville. What's going on? We just discovered a withering zone. The withering is back? But the patrol route you were on should have been already cleared just a week ago. It reappeared so quickly. Can you tell me the exact location? It's up ahead, deep in the river valley. It's appeared in a spot that blocks nearly the entire narrow part of the valley area, so we decided to come find you as quickly as possible. And the radius of the contamination? Sorry, I couldn't get a clear enough view to tell. No one in our patrol team had a vision, and it appeared to still be spreading, so we didn't risk getting any closer. Okay, I understand. You made the right decision. I'll go deal with it right away. In the meantime, please guide these two back to Gundarvaville. Wait! Kainari! Why don't you let us help you? You two have only just arrived in Sumeru. You're still unfamiliar with many things in these lands. There's a unique type of anomaly that occurs in the Sumeru rainforest. It's called the Withering. The affected areas not only cause nearby vegetation to wither, but it's also lethal to wildlife and even people. If you don't carry a vision, then you should think twice before approaching such places. Yes, Amir is absolutely right. I wasn't kidding when I said the rainforest is a dangerous place. As Amir said, only someone with a vision, that is, the power to manipulate elements, will be able to resist the withering's corrosive effects for a time. That's right. If any of the forest rangers without a vision come across a withering zone, we first make a record of the location and then have a ranger with the proper abilities deal with it, like Tainari here. Only someone with a vision can venture within a withering zone and find a way to deal with it. But you don't seem to carry a vision. Don't worry. She may not have a vision, but she's a real pro at using the power of the elements. Sweat it. We've helped others deal with similar situations before. Wait, you've met other forest rangers before? I was planning to properly show you both how to identify the withering before you left Gondarvaville. Anyway, since you two are experienced adventurers, come with me. I'm sure you'll both be able to help. Over there looks like a withering zone. Even though Paimon's seen one before, it's still kind of scary. All right, Traveler. We're about to enter the withering zone. Since you already have experience dealing with these things, you should already know what to do. But please remember, don't push yourself. If at any point it becomes too much, return outside the zone and take a breather. It could become a matter of life and death. You ready then? Let's go. First, we must locate any branches sustaining the withering zone. Busted! Huh! <laughs> 
Great work. Now that all the branches have been cleared, we'll need to take care of the tomb. Hi! Things are about to get dicey. <sighs> Quietly now. Now, destroy the tumors of the withering! Yes, thanks to you two. We were able to quickly restore this area back to normal. Um, Tainari? You make it sound like we did well, but why does Paimon have the feeling you're worried about something? It's that obvious, huh? Alright, it's like this. Recently, the rate at which the Withering Zone appears has been increasing. Even though we were able to quickly clear that Withering Zone, it won't be long before another one appears. If that simply meant war work for me, then that wouldn't be an issue. But it's far more severe than that. The withering is leaving lasting effects on the rainforest itself. For instance, even though we cleared out the withering zone, many of the plants that were affected will not recover. This presents a crisis for the ecosystem itself. Many plants in the rainforest are already in decline, directly impacting the wildlife that depends on those plants. And most disturbingly, as the appearances of withering zones have started to increase, Kale's case of Elazar has also become more serious. Huh? Well, why is that? I'm still not sure of the exact reason. However, I've received word from acquaintances at the Academia that similar cases are being reported for patients with other conditions. No, none that we know of. The withering has been recorded in Sumeru for millennia. It's said that it originates from the depths of the world. By the way, have you heard of Ermansol before? Ermansol is a tree located deep beneath the surface. Although it isn't like any tree we know in a biological sense, you can basically think of it as a large tree that grows downwards rather than upwards. I'm sure you've heard of ley lines, right? They're like the roots of Ermansol spreading and extending from a massive cavern deep underground all the way up to the surface. Ley lines continually absorb the memories of this world, which are then funneled into Ermin's soul, allowing it to collect knowledge and wisdom from ancient times to present day. The Dendro Archon is known as the God of Wisdom because her consciousness is directly connected to it. It is also said that the Dendro Archon's power is a manifestation of Ermin's soul. And as for the withering, its emergence is related to a disease that's affecting it. That's right. My ancestors learned of this from Greater Lord Ruka Devata's familiars a long time ago. But even those mysterious creatures did not know of a cure for Ermin's soul. I'm afraid we rangers will be battling the withering zones here for a long time until a cure is found. All right, that's enough on this topic for the time being. Now that we've taken care of things here, it's time for us to head back to Gondarbaville. Ready, steady, go!
Tainari, you all made it back. How did it go? The withering zone you reported has been taken care of. No need to worry. Huh. Wait, is that... Oh no, Hapasia! Huh? What's wrong, Tainari? This Duskbird is Hapasia's designated courier for urgent news. You do remember her, don't you? She's the scholar you and Paimon were following when you first arrived in Sumeru. Oh, her? How could we forget? Uh, so did something happen? Let me see what's written in the letter first. Hmm. Oh. So what's it say? And what's with that weird expression on your face? Uh, just let Paimon read it. Huh? Uh, all Paimon sees are three squiggly lines. <sighs> yes. Allow me to explain. After we brought you from Hapasia's cave to Gondarvaville, Hapasia resumed her meditation. She must have just finished. It's been nearly three days since she's had anything to eat, and it appears she's forgotten to prepare some rations. This letter is her asking us for help. We need to go. What? You mean she's been sitting there for three days? Hey, wait, how did you know all that from just a few lines on the paper? Well, obviously, because this has happened before. Last time, she drew five lines. And by the time we found her... <clears throat> well, I'd prefer not to remember that. Needless to say, Hapasia's been through worse, but we should still get to her as quickly as possible. I've got some emergency rations set aside for times like these. Paimon, Traveler, could you two bring these to her? Wait, you want us to bring her the rations? Uh... But will the Traveler be okay if her cave is still filled with that funny incense? Let's find out. Here, Traveler, take a smell and see. So, how do you feel? Huh? Really? You're not feeling even a little drowsy? Like, wait, how'd you know that she'd be okay this time, Tainari? Back when we were clearing the Withering Zone, I observed that she could adeptly manipulate the Dendro element. I knew then that she would be fine. And if I may ask, when I was telling you two about Soul's ley lines, was what I described similar at all to what you saw while you were unconscious? That's correct. Those weren't hallucinations at all. Though I don't intend to apologize for deceiving you. Because what you saw is of significant importance. My forefathers were shown much favor by greater Lord Ruka Devata. We took an oath to protect this nation together with her. Now that that duty has fallen to me, it was part of my responsibilities to ascertain whether you could be entrusted with the fate of Sumeru. Now, after seeing you in action with my own eyes, you have earned my confidence, and I no longer feel the need to hide any secrets from you. When you passed out, your consciousness had connected directly with Ermansoul. What you witnessed were actually real memories contained within Ermansoul itself. I could try to tell you more, but it would be better if you went to ask Hapasia instead. Her focus on meditation and use of spirit borneol are aimed at establishing a connection with Ermansoul, just as you did. Ah, uh, that sounds nice and all, but will she really help us? Seriously, she completely ignored us the last time we tried talking to her. That was because when you ran into her, she was in a special phase of her training. During that time, she must avoid communicating with others. Please, wait here for a moment.
Here, take these. It's a meal I packed for Hypatia, as well as some other ingredients. I'm sure it'll come in handy. Also, here's a letter that I would like you to give to her. Just show it to her and she'll answer any questions you may have. No. I should be the one thanking you. You've both been a great help these last few days. Hypatia should still be in the cave. Let's go inside and see how she's doing. This climate is far more pleasant than that of the desert. Hypatia should still be in the cave. Let's go inside and see how she's doing. There you are! Hypatia, are you all right? Uh, uh, so hungry. <coughs> Eat water. There's no way we can get her to eat in her current condition. Uh, let's try finding some water first. Huh? Wait. Why does it look super foggy outside all of a sudden? Uh, anyway, let's go look around. Yeah. <laughs> 
over there and have a closer look. Who knows? Maybe we'll find a lead of some kind. No. Quietly now. Here comes the cat.
Something to that is going on here. This place is getting weirder by the minute. <gasps> hey, what's the matter? You don't look so good.
she's doing. Ah, oh, so sweet. Mm. Well, the good news is that she's still conscious. Hey, why'd you drop her food on the floor like that? Uh, are you okay? That's really not like you. Anyways, we can talk about this later. We better make sure she's all right first. Whoa! Wait a sec. Look at all this fruit lying around her. We can put that to good use. Uh, who is there? Tainari, is that you? Uh. Huh? It's okay. You can relax, Hypatia. Tainari sent us here to bring you some food and water. Here, we have a letter that he asked us to give you. I see. So, you're friends of Tainari. I apologize for all the trouble I've caused you. I'm grateful that you came so quickly to save me. You even brought all this fruit. Uh, well, actually, we didn't bring the fruit. It was already here when we arrived. We were kind of wondering about that, actually. When we found you here, there was all this fruit lying around and even some juice dripping from your lips. Uh, how did you end up like this anyway? Oh, really? Hmm, I seem to understand now. All the fruit was likely from my, uh, neighbor. Must have come by and saw me like this. Your neighbor? You mean there's someone else living nearby? Oh? So you're able to see them too? Second Traveler, you say that before we arrived, you saw some mysterious creature and suddenly had a strange dream? Isn't that a little too crazy to believe? No, I actually do believe what the Traveler is saying. I myself had a similar experience once before and ended up scaring my timid little neighbor here. You needn't worry. They mean you no harm. They only dragged you into the dream because they hoped to buy themselves a little time in order to scurry away. Hypatia, just what kind of creature is your neighbor exactly? I'm not sure what it's called, to be honest. But I do know that they have some sort of deeper connection with the Dendro Archon. I know this because the first time I saw them was also the exact day my consciousness was able to form a connection with Ermin's soul. Even after I opened my eyes and stopped meditating, my heart was still pounding, and my mind was racing with all the knowledge that I had touched. And at that very moment, I suddenly noticed a small figure at the opening of the cave. In my curiosity, I began to walk over to the creature. They must have already been used to me living in the cave, because they didn't seem to mind me approaching them. They just kept doing whatever they were up to. It wasn't until I crouched down next to them that they suddenly realized that I could see them. And then? And then, I had a dream. By the time I came to, they were nowhere to be seen. I was convinced they'd never show up again. But, sure enough, I saw them nearby a few days later. And they weren't alone. I feel like they aren't as afraid of me as the first time I approached them. But I never would have expected them to save me. Yes, no doubt about that. By the way, Tainari mentioned in his letter that you had questions for me regarding Ermansoul. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
Sounds like just drinking juice still isn't quite enough for my stomach. Well, if somebody hadn't dropped the food earlier... <sighs> anyway, looks like we'll need to prepare something ourselves. Besides, Paimon's getting hungry, too. Let's eat first and talk about Erminsoul later. All right, we're up, Traveler. Today's menu will feature sweet madame and a radish veggie soup. You'll love them, Hapasia. They're our specialties, after all. Mmm, sounds good. I've never tried any dishes from other nations before. I certainly look forward to it. It's been so long since I've had a decent meal, too. To be honest, the last time had to be when Tainari came to visit. <laughs> All done! Let's use the empty box that Tainari gave us since we already watched it. Oh, it smells amazing. And the box is a nice touch, too. Let's go serve this up and start eating with Hapasia. Take it easy. Thank <laughs> you. 
Take it easy. Are you already finished cooking? Mmm, smells delectable. I'm truly thankful whenever I can enjoy a proper meal like this. Uh, cooking really isn't my forte. Even though everything you mentioned was in Tainari's letter, it's still hard to believe you were able to connect with Ermin's soul immediately after smelling spirit born eel for the first time. It took me nearly three years before I could do so. And everyone at the academia even lauded me as a genius. You should know that some researchers spent their entire lives without ever successfully connecting with Ermin's soul as you have. So why does this incense allow people to connect to Ermin's soul? The ingredients used to make spirit born ale primarily consist of plants created by Greater Lord Ruka Devata. These special ingredients are conducive to heightening our senses to the Dendro Archon's power. Since the root of the Dendro Archon's power lies within Ermensol, we can occasionally tap into her powers to peer into the depths of the Earth. Naturally, Anyone who can establish a connection with Ermisol in their first ever attempt must be a person of great understanding. Hmm. Makes sense. But Paimon's got a question. Why was she sensitive to the smell of those plants for such a long time? That was primarily due to her body's unique constitution. Stimulated by the incense, she could perceive the Dendro Archon's power and experience the sensory overload. Hence, the adverse reactions. Taking in any scent similar to the ingredients of spirit born ale would cause adverse effects. Not to worry, though. It appears you've already fully recovered. Technically, your body should still be sensitive to the powers of the Dendro Archon. But unless you're using intentional meditation techniques, the scent of spirit born ale should no longer trigger such reactions. Whew. Well, that's a relief. I must admit, I am quite envious of your abilities. Even if it meant suffering from pounding headaches for the rest of my life, I'd consider it worthwhile so long as I could connect with Ermansoul at will. Whoa! You're really serious about this whole thing, aren't you? <laughs> I am a researcher, after all. As a member of the Ritawes Darshan at the Academia, my main area of research is the stars and their connection to the fate of living beings. But there is still so much we don't know, especially regarding the mysteries that lie in the starry skies. Which is why I must turn to the all-knowing Ermansoul for answers. If only my perception wasn't so limited. Unfortunately, I cannot guarantee that my every attempt to attune with Ermansoul will be successful. Or that doing so will leave my consciousness intact. I am currently in the stage of training known as Satyavada Life. Many researchers in Sumeru have lost their minds while seeking to attune with Ermansoul during this stage. Sages have said that Ermansoul contains divine knowledge, and touching such knowledge without the proper preparations and abilities will only lead to one's mind caving in on itself. That's why we meditate alone. We need to ensure that our minds will be calm, while minimizing the possibility of involving anyone else. Whoa! So knowledge from Ermansoul can be super dangerous! Aren't you afraid of the risk, Hapeja? Of course I do. Especially during nights that are pitch black with no moonlight, and dead silent without even the sound of insects. However, I've been feeling better as of late. I don't get as scared anymore knowing that I have a little neighbor living nearby. I believe that being able to see them is a sort of blessing from the Dendro Archon. <laughs> but what's strangest of all is that they're clearly an envoy of the God of Wisdom herself. And they have the curious power to make people dream. What's so strange about that? It 
doesn't sound so out of place for a divine being, does it? Well, it's strange because nearly nobody in Sumeru can ever dream. Oh, is that true? Yes, well, to an extent. Only children can dream in Sumeru. Adults, however, never do. The sages say that wisdom implies rationality, but that which occurs in dreams is often neither rational nor logical. Yes, if one struggles with anxieties, those emotions could influence their dreams. The fact that the people of Sumeru do not have dreams is seen as a blessing by the sages. They believe that Greater Lord Rukadevata, the God of Wisdom, is keeping us away from the foolish delusions you encounter in your sleep. I was born into a family of scholars in Sumeru City. Ever since I was a child, my parents would always tell me that I'll know I've grown up once I stop dreaming. I studied hard, enrolled as a student in the academia, and went on to become a researcher. <sighs> sure enough, I never dreamed again. But then, on the day I scared the little Aranara, I suddenly saw a dream again. It was incredible. Though I don't exactly remember what I saw, I clearly recall the feeling. I suddenly felt like I was a child again. Back then, I was foolish and ignorant as any youth would be, but I was free of fear. Maybe dreaming isn't as bad as we've made it out to be. <clears throat> uh, just be sure not to speak of this if you travel to Sumeru City. They'll look at you as if you've lost your mind. So, do you have any thoughts about the things she saw when she connected with Erminsul? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't have any answers as of now. All I can say is that what you saw is a memory contained within Ermansoul itself. Hmm... World, forget me. What could that possibly mean? Uh, if only I could ascend past Satyavada life and begin Paripurna life, I might have some more answers for you. Uh, if you two are ever in the area again, please be sure to come and see me. There's no need to be thanking me. You two are my saviors. Besides, I'm already looking forward to tasting some more of your cooking. <laughs> now that we know Hapasia is alright and had the chance to ask her some questions, Paimon thinks it's about time to head back to Gondarvaville. I got a new letter from an informant. It looks like the situation has changed again.
feeling all right today. I'll take the chance to try to get some more done than usual. When I don't have much to keep me occupied, old thought patterns start to creep back in and... As soon as I start talking about it, the flashbacks start. Forest Patrol route map. Uh, we need to head here first, then make our way over to there? Hmm. There's a lot of writing. It is tantamount to burying your head in the sand. I understand that you're a forest watcher and that it's your duty to combat the effects of withering zones, but isn't it evident that such work is not a lasting solution to the problem? As Sage Kaje clearly stated, your presence and guidance in Sumeru City is pivotal in finding a cure for Ermansul. How could you possibly refuse? Keep your emotions in check, Gulam. Let's at least listen to Tainari's reason for declining. We're here to invite him to the Academia, not to cause a scene. Sage Kaje, I am truly honored that you came here in person, but I'm afraid I must still decline your invitation. I am merely a forest watcher. How could the great minds of the Harabatat have any need of someone like me? <laughs> well, it turns out that your refusal letter had some implications on your master's reputation. He is a renowned sage of the Immorta, after all. So now I've come here in his stead. I see. Huh. And I figured that given his temper, he would come here and berate me personally. Tainari, your master is an integral part of this effort, and now he requires your assistance. And what exactly does my master need of me, Sage Kaje? You'll know, once you've arrived in Sumero City, that is. And how long will I be required to stay? Uh, there's no definite answer as of now. Do you mean to tell me that despite coming all the way here to Kandarbaville, you still can't answer the questions I laid out in the letter to my master? If that's the case, then I'm afraid I cannot give you a definite answer either. Tainari, but you... Ah, uh, so be it. Come, Gulam, we're leaving. It's nothing. Some people from the Academia wanted me to go to Sumeru City to assist them with a project. 
but I had to refuse on account of all my responsibilities here. But all that can wait. How did things go with Hapasia? It was quite the eventful trip, but the main thing is that she's safe and sound. She answered a bunch of questions for us, too. Very good. Now that the Traveler has made a full recovery, there shouldn't be any reason for you to tarry here longer. I assume you will be heading to Sumeru City, correct? That's right! We want to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali and ask her for advice. Um, do you have any idea on how we can find her? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't have any advice for you there. Well, do you at least know anyone we can try asking in Sumeru City? Hmm, let me think. My trips to Sumeru City have been fairly short, and most of my acquaintances are researchers. How about this? I'll write you a letter of introduction that you can give to a researcher I know. He's from the Amorta Darshan and is adept at gathering information. Asking him might prove worthwhile. Also, when you enter Sumeru City, you'll probably end up receiving something like this item here. I'm not sure if it will ever come in handy for you, but maybe you can give it a try. Oh? What is it? It's called an Akasha Terminal. It's a tool produced by the Academia that utilizes the legacy of Greater Lord Ruka Devata. Some say that this very item is the basis of Sumeru's reputation as the City of Wisdom. Needless to say, this device and its usage fall under the Academia's expertise, so I'll leave it to them to show you how to use it. Great! Next step, Sumeru City! Uh, oh, but wait, before that... That's right! Tainari, we have something important to say to Kale before we leave. Is she doing better now? Yes, she's doing much better. After being confined to her bed all this time, I thought a little walk would do her some good. Last I saw her, she was taking the path towards the North Crossing. She knew you two would be leaving soon, so she must have wanted to see you off. Thanks, Tainari. All right, let's go! Farewell, and good luck to you both. I, uh... Well, uh... <sighs> Never mind. I guess I should just wish you two a safe and successful journey. Thanks for waiting here just to see us off, Kale. We're headed to Sumeru City. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. My condition won't be getting in the way of my duties. I want to be a forest ranger, after all. It's up to me and the others to protect the rainforest here. And, uh... Well, uh, I'm sorry. I should have told you both about my condition when we first met. I just wanted you two to treat me as a normal friend, not some girl that needs your sympathy. But I guess now I understand that the most important thing is for friends to be genuine with one another. There's no need to apologize, Kale. We should be thanking you for trusting us enough to be your friends and sharing your past with us. We're probably still gonna worry about your condition, but that's because we're friends and we care about you! Thank you. That means a lot. Uh, before you leave, I have something for you. Oh? What is it? It's my recipe for pita pockets. I told you that I'd give you a copy, remember? My handwriting is a little, uh, messy, so please don't laugh. Thanks, Kale. Now we can eat those scrumptious little pitas whenever and wherever we like. I hope that whenever you eat them, you'll both remember your time here in Gandarvaville. Well then, I, Trainee Forest Ranger Kale, bid you both farewell. Please visit Gandarvaville again. The rangers will always be ready to assist you here. <laughs>
people entered the city, something on their heads lit up. One moment, please, you two. It appears this is your first time visiting Sumeru City. Oh, yeah, that's right. But how did you know that? Because there's currently no information on either of you in the Akasha. But no need to worry, that won't prevent you from entering the city. In fact, the Academia conveniently provides each traveler to Sumeru City with a device. Perhaps you two have heard of the Akasha before. It's our beloved Greater Lord Rukadavata's lasting legacy, a treasure trove of collected knowledge. After centuries of tireless research on the Akasha, the Academia created one of its most ingenious inventions, the Akasha Terminal. As long as you are within Sumeru's borders, you may use an Akasha terminal to connect directly to the Akasha and access any knowledge you need. I should mention that due to technical limitations, the operation of Akasha terminals will be much smoother and more effective in large cities such as Sumeru City and Port Hormos. Oh, so this is the thing that Tainari was telling us about. It sounds pretty amazing. You two are quite fortunate. Until recently, it was standard practice to only issue Akasha terminals to outlanders who spent an extended amount of time in Sumeru. However, this policy was recently changed, and now all travelers are issued one upon arrival. Here are your Akasha terminals. Please handle them with care. <laughs> it kind of looks like a leaf. To activate it, simply hold it in your hand and say the following phrase to yourself. <clears throat> May the mighty god bless us with their voice of wisdom. Oh, since this little doodad lets you access knowledge, maybe we can use it to find a way to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let's give it a try. <clears throat> May the mighty god bless us with their voice of wisdom. <gasps> Whoa! Just now, something clicked, and Paimon suddenly knew how to use this thing! It seems all we need to do is concentrate on what we want to know, and BAM! You get it! Oh, that'll come in real handy! Exactly! That is the power of the Akasha! And with that, let me officially welcome you both to Sumeru City! May the wisdom of the Dendro Archon always be your guide! Okay, now that we're in, we can check the Akasha about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let Paimon try. Hmm. <gasps> 500 years ago, the sages found a newly born deity from within some scorched ruins. The deity now resides in the sanctuary of Suristana. Hmm. Seems pretty similar to what Kali was telling us. Okay, next, let's concentrate on asking how to meet her. Hmm. Huh? Uh, Hyman doesn't sense anything. Um. Hmm. The Akasha didn't respond to Paimon's question. Oh, come on! Ugh. Focusing on this question feels like when you have something you're trying to remember and it's on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't think of it. Ugh. Paimon's brain is exhausted. Oh! Smart idea! But what are you going to ask it? Uh-oh. Hyman's getting all teary-eyed all of a sudden. It feels like the people of Sumeru really miss their Archon.
we're outlanders and we've only just arrived in Sumeru? You know, maybe we're not qualified to receive an answer to this sort of question or something. That's me. Can I help you? Great! You see, Tainari sent us here and... What? Tainari? I... Please, th there's no need to say anything, really. Sure, I admit that the article I published last month wasn't my best work, and maybe the data didn't produce the most convincing results, but... Here! This is a letter from Tainari! Oh, let me see... Oh, what a relief. You two nearly scared the life out of me. So, you two just have some questions for me? Seems even Tainari acknowledges my innate ability for procuring information. So, what is it you two would like to know? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You mean you want to meet the Dendro Archon herself? Ah, uh, this isn't exactly my area of expertise, but let me see what I can find in the Akasha. Hmm. Sorry, the Akasha didn't respond to my query. What? You too? But what about your abilities for getting information and all that? Uh, Paimon was sure you'd be able to access more info than we did. Well, as I said, this isn't my area of expertise. I am but a lowly researcher, so the Akasha doesn't see a need for me to know more about the Dendro Archon. All I know is that ever since Lesser Lord Kusanali returned to Sumeru, she's never left the Sanctuary of Sorasthana or made a public appearance. Huh. Didn't expect her to be such a mysterious figure. The Dendro Archon is somewhat of a recluse. Perhaps she just doesn't want to entertain visitors, which would explain the lack of information in the Akasha. <laughs> no need to worry just yet. I'm only hypothesizing here. You could certainly try asking around and see if anyone else has ideas. And besides, you two should consider the bright side of things. Not being able to see Lesser Lord Kusanali may not be a bad thing. In this world, there will always be information you cannot obtain from the Akasha and things you can never accomplish. Knowing when to yield is a form of wisdom. Take me, for example. It's a miracle if my brain cells can spit out one paper every three years. But Tainari? That guy can publish three papers in just a single year. Uh, okay. Thanks for your advice. Don't mention it. If you two ever want information about things like who's been promoted within the academia or relations between the six great sages, come find me. Hey, come on. This is a survival skill at the Academia. Oh, Paimon's expectations were pretty low, but this is so low, it's like digging holes in the dirt. Oh. So what do we do now? Even if we want to talk to someone, we don't know anybody here. Huh? Like who? Catherine! 
guild has its own intel network. Let's hurry and find her. Astra Abyssosk. Hello, Traveler and Paimon. Catherine, we need your help with something. Understood. The Adventurers Guild is always ready to serve you. With what do you require assistance? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You two wish to meet with Sumeru's Archon. Understood. Please wait. I apologize, but I am unable to call up any relevant information in the Akasha. I'm also unable to locate any pertinent information in my personal memory. Aww, another dead end. Well, if Catherine can't help us, then we really don't know anyone else to ask now. Please do not worry. I may know of someone who can help you two. In Sumeru, the Adventurous Guild does not serve as the vanguard of information. Rather, there are numerous active mercenary groups collectively known as the Aramites. They take on various contracts and work all across Sumeru, so they naturally accrue intelligence. An Aramite brigade called the Corps of Thirty is in charge of Sumeru City's defenses. Not only are they the oldest brigade, but they are responsible for managing and coordinating the affairs of all other mercenary brigades. Core of 30? What a weird name. Supposedly, they are named as such because their ranks numbered 30 at their inception. Asphant, an advisor with the Core of 30, maintains good relations with the Adventurer's Guild. Though he's already retired, he and his words carry great weight within mercenary circles. If you'd like to get in contact with him, you can find him at the Core of Thirty's headquarters, the Citadel of Regzar. You're welcome. I wish you two the best of luck. We look forward to your exploits in Sumeru. Alright! Off to the Citadel of Regzar we go!
Such a struggle every time I talk to those scholars. Propagate! I hand this work over to the Is there a new request from the academia? Request. Military supplies for the Eremites must be distributed appropriately. <laughs> Good roll. All right, maybe I'll take one more day off and knock out the rest of the work once I'm feeling up to it. Military supplies are such a struggle every time I talk to the scholars. Uh, is there a new request from the academia? Welcome. The Adventurer's Guild told me to expect you to. It's nice to meet you, Osvang. We'd like to ask you about something. I see. So, Catherine's the one who sent you this way. Ha! <laughs> It's true that the Aramites' network is vast, but even I can't help you meet the Dendro Archon. Wait, seriously? That's it? <laughs> Afraid so. The Aramites aren't terribly religious, so we don't know much about divinities. As far as the Akasha goes, we can access even less than you. We originally came from the desert. The gods there died off long ago. Since those days, we've used our own two hands to carve out a living. We don't beg gods for their aid. It isn't just us, though. If you ask me, I think most in Sumeru aren't interested in lesser lord Kusanali. Oh? Why is that? Just take the Academia, for example. They're the ones who truly rule Sumeru. Although they believe in gods, most of them only care for the late, greater Lord Rugadavada. In their eyes, she was the one who founded Sumeru and gifted us with the Akasha. Lesser Lord Kusanali just happened to inherit her legacy. Because of the Academia's influence, most citizens are more familiar with greater Lord Rugadavada and hold her in greater esteem. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali never makes an appearance, and the Academia never announces anything about her. As far as the people of Sumeru are concerned, she's just a god that exists. And that's all. Really? Aww. After hearing all of that, Paimon sort of feels bad for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Ha! <laughs> but who knows? We're all just guessing when it comes down to it. Besides, I'm sure the God of Wisdom doesn't worry about her reputation among people like us. All right. Well, thanks for the info, Osfond. <laughs> no problem. Always happy to help out the Adventurer's Guild.
Not only are they not interested in the Dendro Archon, they even say stuff like, if the Akasha doesn't think I should know, then I don't need to know about it. We've been asking for information non-stop ever since we got to Sumeru. But the harder we try, the more helpless everything seems. Isn't there at least one person in this entire city who cares about Lesser Lord Kusanali? Oh, uh, you two are interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali? Huh? Who are you? From the sound of it, you two are outlanders who recently arrived here. You've been asking around for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Dunyarzad, one of Lesser Lord Kusanali's faithful followers. Whoa, really? Then do you know how we can meet with her? I'm afraid I can't help you with that. But your conversation earlier did happen to remind me of a legend about the Dendro Archon. Sure. It goes like this. Long, long ago, there was a man who heard a prophecy. It predicted that a great calamity was about to befall him. Panicked by what he heard, the man sought out the Dendro Archon in the hopes that she would bless him with the wisdom to help him escape his predicament. The man journeyed across deserts and through rainforests and experienced tribulations of every kind. However, he still couldn't find any trace of the Dendro Archon. In despair, he thought, alas, the Archon has abandoned me. He then had no choice but to sorrowfully resign to his fate. Okay, and then what happened? And then, the calamity came. But to his own surprise, the man felt somehow emboldened by the trials of his journey. By relying on his own strength, he managed to overcome the adversity. At that moment, a bird perched upon his shoulder. This bird was, in fact, an avatar of the Dendro Archon. She said, Oh, Archon Seeker, do you now understand? She and her wisdom have long been found by you. Along your journey, we were in every flower and blade of grass, every ray of sparkling sun and every breath of dancing wind. So long as you continue to think and ponder, will be wherever you go. Yeah, thanks for the story! Paimon feels all warm and fuzzy inside after that. <laughs> uh, in a way, it seems like this story is also one of the Dendro Archon's avatars. Dunyarzad, since you worship Lesser Lord Kusanali, can you tell us anything else about her? Of course. So did you two know that, uh... The... Uh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but it seems something's come up now. Uh, let's chat another day. Hey, wait! Uh, what the heck just happened? It looks like they're searching for someone. Hmm. Dunyarzad was acting super nervous just now. You think they're looking for her? The stinks! We finally managed to find a lead about Lesser Lord Kusanali! We can't let them get in the way now! <sighs> Let's see if we can get rid of them! Then we can catch up with Dunyarzad! Hey, have you two seen a brown haired girl wearing a purple top and a long blue dress? We're looking for her. Uh, did she have bandages wrapped around her wrists? Yes, that's her. Did you see which direction she went? Uh, yeah, she went that way. Quick, after her. <laughs> that should keep him busy for a while. Let's hurry up, find Dunyar's on.
You two. Oh, you startled me there. You can relax now. We threw those people looking for you off the trail. Really? Thank you so much. Unfortunately, I believe there's still more of them out there looking for me. Uh-oh. Looks like there are some coming this way. Huh? More of them? Then what are we standing here for? Run! No, wait, I, uh, my body isn't in the best shape. Uh, it's difficult for me to run. Okay, sounds good. There's a tavern on the other side of the port we can go to. They probably wouldn't expect me to hide in a place like that. All right, let's move out. Stay behind us. We'll keep an eye out for anyone looking for you. We made it. Oh, they shouldn't be able to find us now. Wait, stand down, Dia. My lady, who are these two? They're travelers that I met on the street just a moment ago. They happened to notice that you were all searching for me, so they helped me hide. I see. In that case, you two should scram. There's nothing here for you. Wait a sec! Who the heck are you? And why are you shooing us away? I'm Miss Dunyarzad's bodyguard, here to see that she returns home safe and sound. <sighs> My lady, let's get going. You've been gone for so long that your parents are worrying themselves sick. And if I refuse to go with you? It'd be easier for the both of us if you cooperated. But if you insist on not going, then I'll have to carry you like a sack of potatoes. Hey! Dunyarzad already said she doesn't want to go back! Why are you still pushing her? Stay out of this. You don't understand the situation. Sorry, my lady. Even though I'm your bodyguard, your parents are my employers. I have to answer to them. How much? Wait, what? How much more do I have to pay you to become your employer? So you never listen to my parents ever again. Double? A triple? Give me some time and I'll get that much. My lady, this isn't about Mora. I don't know what you think of us Aramites, but let me say this. I like Mora, but I'll never go against rebels. That's why I'm here looking for you. Sure, it's an order from my employer, but... My conscience was also telling me it's the right thing to do. And knowing your health, carelessly running around like this is gonna hurt you. For the sake of those who love you, don't be stubborn. No, you're wrong. I'm aware of my limits and I know what I'm doing. Honestly, the only people being stubborn right now are my parents. And they know perfectly well that it makes no difference if I'm at home or not. I still won't accept reality. And every time I bring this up, they just changed the subject. Dia, you've been living with us a long time already. This should be old news to you. 
Dia, I know it hasn't been easy for mother and father, and I'm grateful for everything they've done for me. But there's someone else in this world I'm also grateful to. Because she saved me. The love I have for her is the same I have for my parents. This is my life and my last chance. So I want to do something meaningful. My lady, are you sure what you're doing now is meaningful? Yes, I'm sure. At least, it is to me. <sighs> Fine, I won't ask you to return home anymore. But let me make something very clear. I'm only doing this because I respect your determination, not because I agree with you. Thank you, Dia. <sighs> Sorry for being so rude just now. My nerves were acting up. And I even brought up your payment in such an offensive way. Uh, don't worry about it, my lady. I did say that I like Mora. Besides, that's our next topic of conversation. Today's little excursion caused such a ruckus that every single bodyguard at the estate was deployed. It wouldn't be easy to hide things from your old man. Since this definitely won't be your last escapade, here's a little tip. You should at least make it look like your room and things are still in order when you leave. Also, you'll need someone to cover you for when you're out and about. So, I'll let you hire me, my lady. This way, everyone wins. As for the pay, let's say mm, half of what your father pays me. We can settle the bill when we return to the estate. Okay, deal. Yay! Looks like they've reached an understanding! <clears throat> <sighs> I'm fine, really. I, I just feel a little tired now that things have calmed down. <sighs> My lady, stop trying to look tough. We're already in a tavern, so let's rest up and grab some grub. I'm sorry for worrying you two. If you don't mind, I'd like for you to join us. Lesser Lord Kusanali.